This video is sponsored by Cervetti, software for services. Learn more about what Cervetti can do for your business and sign up for a free trial at Cervetti.com. Hello, I'm Dr. D, and welcome to Morbid Medicine. Today, I would like to ask you, what does it mean to trust? Would you feel like you could put your life in the arms of your best friend? Will they be there for you, have your back, or will they turn and run to save themselves? Or will they be even more devious and kick you when you're at your weakest? Today's case doesn't just deal with trust in general, but more specifically, could you put your trust in the arms of a one-armed bandit? It all started with me walking into the ER room to be faced with two bikers, one lying on the stretcher holding his stomach, and the other who did nothing but stand at the wall holding himself against it with the only arm he had. After taking a medical history, it was revealed that these two shady appearing characters tended to spend time together with a group of similarly minded individuals at a biker bar on the outskirts of town. Although they denied being a member of a gang, they had admitted to previous arrests for assault and battery and drug charges. They were not currently employed, but made ends meet by doing odd jobs locally the patient in question admitted to a previous history of meth addiction, but currently was clean and only admitted to occasional drinking, occasional smoking, and the rare use of marijuana. And on this day, he had only drank a few beers. The two were spending the evening together pre-gaming at his apartment before leaving and meeting their friends at the local dive bar at which they were regulars. But before they could leave for the main event at the bar, he suddenly fell ill with sharp left-sided stomach pains coming in waves, which were described as sharp and crampy. He denied eating anything out of the ordinary, being around anyone else who was sick, or any previous bouts of similar illnesses. He looked fairly ill and older than he was listed on his chart. He was sweaty with a rapid heart rate, and though otherwise pleasant in demeanor, Every few minutes, the exam was interrupted for short periods of crippling abdominal pain, which would halt any further progress until they would stop just as quickly as they came on. His stomach couldn't easily be evaluated because of the pain, but the patient had a hard and tense stomach that was very tender to touch, especially on the left side. Very soon after, he got tired of being poked and prodded and the patient refused any further physical examination. At this point, you could tell that he was clearly more than annoyed and angry, almost to the point of violence. But this was stopped by the pain, which would bring him back to a feebled mass on the stretcher. Labs were drawn and showed significant inflammation and possible infection in his blood, but no organ failure. While waiting for a CAT scan of his stomach, we had to give him IV nausea medicine as he had started to vomit. The patient's blood pressure dropped and he was bolus with IV fluids and started on antibiotics since there was worry that he may have already been becoming septic. The patient was then wheeled back to radiology and at which time the patient's one-armed companion decided it would be best to give an Irish goodbye and flew the coop before the patient was returned by the orderly. Now, for those of you who are listening closely at this point in our story, might choose to think about why our one-gloved wonder would do something like this. Was he actively wanted and was trying to evade capture? Did he poison his friend and decide to dip out at the last moment? Was he afraid that this was a hit from some rival and decided it would be best to get out before someone decided to finish the job? Oddly. The reason turned out to be much more human, embarrassment, and the lack of care for the return of personal property. As the CAT scan showed, 
a large foreign body present in the colon that likely perforated it. It was at this point in our story which our patient decided it was about time to be honest with a series of unfortunate events that ended with him having to take an embarrassing trip to a surgical suite. As it turns out, the two enjoyed more than a few beers before heading to the bar and had gotten into the habit of experimenting a little while the alcohol was setting in. What started as a two-person hokey pokey slowly expanded into some more adventurous games, stretching amongst other things their boundaries to the point at which their pre-gaming almost turned into sudden death. When his friend's prosthetic forearm accidentally detached and disappeared internally, this ended up turning a private performance of personal puppet play into a particularly perilous predicament of painful panic. A warning for those of you who may not be educated on the topic, it is always best to have an exit plan in such situations. The anal sphincters are much like a fire exit, traditionally only used one way, but with a little ingenuity and manipulation, it can be used either as an entrance or an exit. It can even be propped open, but just like fire exits, they are not meant to be propped open for long, and in that case, whatever is propping it open has to either end up on one side or the other. But at least after a brief moment of panic and a few failed rescue attempts, the patient's friend was happy to assist in driving him to the ER. And after all, in life, whenever we find ourselves in wanting, it is nice to have someone there who is willing to lend us a helping hand. Just make sure they're able to get it back again.